Joining us, a guy who uh, has joined BYU TV a little more this season, last couple games on Countdown to Kickoff and the BYU TV postgame. His name is Tanner Mangum. Tanner, it's great to have you in studio, man. It's always a pleasure. It's been a while since I've been in Studio B. So, uh, and now as an analyst. And now, so yeah. you, we've had you on the phone, but yes. now in studio. I appreciate being in here. It's always, always a good opportunity to join you guys on set. It's a little warmer and drier than what you've experienced at Lavelle <laughs> yes. in the stadium last couple weeks. A little weeks, bit, right? a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about this matchup with U, uh, UMass. We've yeah. talked about concerns and 52 plus and blah it's kind of a weird one because it's pretty obvious that the game is not in the balance it's just how will BYU perform given the way that UMass has played yet now that you're not a player how do you assess this matchup you know as a player you kind of have to give the politically correct responses we right? knew even it even if you don't think right? otherwise. we knew it yes yeah I, I was pretty good at that <laughs> I, you know you had, you had to be pretty good at that but nonetheless when it comes to games like this you, you know you're going to win, right? You know you're going to go in and dominate. If you do your job, it's, it's going to be a, a, a somewhat easy victory. But for me, as a competitor, and, and, and I know a lot of guys on this team, they, they feel the same way, is you want to go and dominate. Like, you want to really go show just how good you are. You're not content with just winning the game. You want to blow them out. A certain standard, I there's guess. A stand, right? There's a standard. There's a level of... of, of uh, not, not perfection, because obviously no game is ever perfect, but you want to go in there with high expectations that you're going to go in and, and show the other team really what you're made of. And I think for this game, especially knowing what's on the back end with San Diego State and a potential pretty good bowl opponent, you want to go in and, and really uh, set, the, uh, set the standard and set, get the momentum going so that you can go into those final two games feeling really confident. So, and this just kind of carries off of that question. So, so what's the approach in a game like this? Do, do you try and, and play it simple, assuming that that's still going to produce big yards and a lot of points? Do you go in trying to throw the ball? What's the approach in a game like this? You want to keep it aggressive. You don't want to play not to lose or, or play like, uh, like you're just you know, hoping to do the bare minimum. And I think that's something that BYU needs to work on. The Cougars haven't been able to start fast a lot this season. Just only a couple games they've really been able to put points on the board first. This game, you got to go in there with an aggressive mindset, saying we're going to start from the, from the very first drive. We're coming to attack. We're coming to put points on the board. And, and uh, I, I've been talking to the players, and they're ready for that. They're ready to, to take it up a notch. They've made their adjustments. Coaches have made their adjustments on, in, on both sides of the ball. Defense is playing more aggressive, putting in a lot more blitzes and different uh, unique packages. And on offense, the uh, Coach Roderick, Fessy Satake, they're getting more involved. They're trying to get more aggressive on offense. And these players are ready to come out attacking. Yeah, it should be an interesting one given that last year it was, it was easy to get up for that game with UMass because it was in Gillette Stadium. That was cool, right? You, you yeah, were part I was of that there. experience. And, and, you, know, you know me, big Patriots fan. Yeah, I love the Patriots. It was, it was awesome to be there and uh, you know, walk where the goat walked. Yeah. But, uh, this <laughs> Kyle Van Oy? <laughs> one of them. <laughs> BYU goat. Yes. This is, uh, you know, this is unique. You know, in Amherst, it's a small stadium. Different, yep. It's, it's a, you know, a very low-level team, one of the worst in, in, in FBS. You could argue the worst. You could argue, yeah, yeah. Very, you could very well argue the worst. But... Like I said before, if you have any type of competitive juices within you, none of that even matters. I mean, I remember in 2015, we played Wagner at home. We watched their film, and it was honestly like watching a high school team. Like, it just, you just knew. FCS team. Yeah, you just, knew, you just knew they didn't have the talent. They didn't have the personnel to match up with us. But even then, I was still pumped. I was still excited to go out there and, and play the game. And, and we went out and, and took care of business. And that's how you have to be as a team, no matter what your opponent is. I know maybe you might be sounding politically correct now, like I'm just saying the right answers, but I mean it. If you're really competitive, you're going to go out and, 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 uh, and make the most of that opportunity because these opportunities are limited. Kalani talks about that a lot, how you only get 12 games, 13 with a bowl. You know, these are few and far between, and you got to make the most of them because you spend all year preparing. And... Saturdays come fast and then they, they go fast and so you got to enjoy each opportunity no matter what no matter who your opponent is Okay, so the Minutemen are giving up defensively 52 points. So that's kind of the number we've been talking about right. Do you expect BYU football to put up at least 52 points? I do Unless we see Kalani really start to play conservative in the second half 
we know Kalani's a classy guy. You saw it last week against Idaho State, literally at the goal line, taking a knee. Classy that, move. That made the line go under, yes. Right, yes. by the way. That's, and the over-under was is, under. That is a yeah. bad beat. That is a, <laughs> it was under yeah, Scott Van Pelt. That is a Scott yep. Van Pelt textbook <laughs> bad beat. <laughs> I mean, but hey, maybe, you know, get, maybe... Maybe Kalani's teaching a lesson here, not to gamble, teaching us not to. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, always a lesson. Involved. Yeah, always a lesson. I just like the context of it. But, <laughs> but so my my, uh, my point is, is, is if if BYU gets up to a commanding lead like they should in the first half, I could see Kalani just really start to just play conservative that second half and and have long drives like that last drive against Idaho State was 11 minutes long. Who knows? We could see some long drives just trying to milk the clock. But that being said, even then, I think BYU should be able to score at will. And, you know, I think they could easily put up 52 plus and but more than anything, I just hope they play clean. Yeah, I hope they take care of business. Don't you know, don't don't give UMass any type of hope. Uh, take care of the football and make improvements, especially from last week against an FCS opponent. The uh, offensive line could have played better. Uh, the, the offense as a whole could have played cleaner. It took a while for them to get going. And it really took that Austin Lee pick six to finally get the juices flowing and the momentum going. And so I hope to see BYU come out off the, you know, right out the gates, setting the tone early. Uh, Kalani Satake's contract uh, was renewed. What's your reaction to that? And what does that mean for the future of Cougar football? I think all you need to look at is the video of the locker room <laughs> to gauge how BYU Nation feels about the extension, right? He's the right guy for the job. Uh, and I've, I've been vocal about this. It's, 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 it's a program-wide issue. It's, an, it's not a, just a Kalani issue. It's not just a player's issue. It's, it's a, uh, a, a program uh, as a whole. Uh, you know, all pieces need to be involved here. And so the extension is the right move. But now what else can you do to help him? What, you know, what, what type of resources can you give him and the team to help the team be successful against some brutal schedules? What, what are you referring to? You're talking schedule? You're talking payment of coaches? It, yeah. The issue. So what I'm talking about resources, meaning, you know, I could, I could go into details about this. I've, I've, I've gone on, on other shows talking about it, but I think there needs to be some, uh, some increased revenue for, uh, for recruiting, helping coaches get out and, and get, get the best talent possible. Um, some more funds for the coaching staff, both head coach and the support staff, the assistants, and and then also resources for the team, like food and nutrition, helping them, uh, you know, in the off season, really get their bodies right for a tough schedule. You know, playing against these types of teams, you need to get your bodies right, and then also uh, access to facilities. You know, you you look at BYU basketball, who has that great annex, and they're able to go in and they get work, whenever they get want. work in whenever they want, twenty four seven. No golf class. No, there's, there's no, no intramurals, team in there, right? no golf class, no soccer class. Yeah. But BYU, ha the, the football team has to deal with things like that, which you look at other top power five programs around the country, they're not dealing with things like that. And it's a small example, but it shows the, uh, the level of commitment, the level of investment that universities put into their football programs. And I think if BYU wants to take that next step to become a power five-like program, then the, uh, the investment needs to match that. Cover Provo High. The the field. That's, no, yeah. No, I'm sure That's a great like, idea. Put like, a put a bubble over that. And then you can put any of these classes or whatever you want in there. For sure. Or the football team, whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because I understand. I'm you know I'm all about um, you know helping the university and and it's, and, and being a world class university. But if Cougar Nation wants to you know wants to see BYU as a national title contender, I call it football playoff contender. Well, you can't do it on a Mountain West budget. And and, and so lots of lots of pieces go into that. But I think those are the next steps right. possible that that that, uh, that the, the program can take as a whole. You generally achieve kind of at the level you have the resources at, and and BYU tends to overachieve, I would argue. And this is a bigger conversation. We yeah, can, of course. Uh, broach another day, but okay, interesting thoughts. Yeah. Okay, and, we're looking for. Oh, go ahead. Well, as I said, the, the schedules we're playing. I mean, look at next year's schedule. It's rough. It's, it's, it's brutal. It's so yeah. hard. You, you know, know how I feel yeah. about it. How do you feel? Yes. I haven't heard your opinion on yeah, this. Yeah, let's talk all summer about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, looking forward to your thoughts on uh, countdown to kickoff tomorrow morning. Hey, I appreciate it. Okay, bright and early. Tanner Mangum, appreciate it. Thanks, Tanner.